Gospel Diaries. Episode 48. Ella Mitchell Big Mama. words nobody else but me <laughs> right nobody else but me <laughs> oh my god all right all right so welcome to gospel diaries a program designed to celebrate and to preserve gospel music history so please take a moment and subscribe to this channel because it's content from my heart to yours and i am overly excited to be in New York, Brooklyn, you know, this Manhattan, Manhattan. <laughs> with the living legend herself. I mean, there's no need for me to do any uh, introduction because her work speaks for itself. I'm talking about none other, other, none other than Miss Ella Mitchell. How you doing? Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I like that. <laughs> you know, God gets all the glory, don't he? Yes, he does. Some people try to take it from him. <laughs> because he deserves all the glory. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, so how you been? Well, my health right now mm -hmm. is giving me um, a little stop. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I finish with the three mm -hmm. surgeries mm -hmm. that I have scheduled mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. starting Friday, mm -hmm. I'll be going back to my acting guild, oh, wow. my group, and back to singing. Mm -hmm. And after the knee replacement, acting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right. I believe around 1952 you organized a group by the name of the Gospel All-Stars. All Is that true? My mother. Oh, your mother. Okay, tell us a little My bit about mother. that. My mother. What happened was, uh, when I was younger, every Saturday night was church night in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We would find a different church to go to, to hang out and sing. And when we went to the church on this particular Saturday night, Charles Taylor, mm. Professor Charles Taylor, he was there and he was singing and he was hoarse. Mm -hmm. So a girl that I knew named Kitty Parm, who From lived... The Claire Wolf singer? Claire, 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 Kitty, Kitty Parm, who, who used to sing, uh, who left our group to go and sing with Claire Wolf. Oh, Lord have mercy now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. okay, well, Kitty Parm, who lived in New Jersey, uh -huh. She was a friend of my older sister, mm -hmm. my older sister, Jessie Mae. Mm -hmm. And um, by him being hoarse, at that time, was a bunch of us young people. I was about 17 years old, mm -hmm. a teenager. Mm -hmm. And so Charles was trying to sing. Mm -hmm. And he was, what? And Kitty said, come on, y'all, let's help him, mm -hmm. you know? So we chipped then and start helping Charles mm -hmm. sing his song. Mm -hmm. And so after that, a lady came up and said, listen, y'all sound so good. Can I book y'all for a program? Really? And I said, well, it's up to Charles. I don't care. <laughs> okay. So Kitty said, well, I don't care because I, I, be, I be with Ella's family mm -hmm. all the time. I know her sister. Mm -hmm. I come here. And that's how it uh, started. So my mother... Uh -huh. What's your, what was your mother's name? Ozella Oze Mitchell. Wow, okay, Mitchell. Okay. Ozella Mitchell, that was my mom. My mother and father got married when she was 16 years old in North Carolina. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so I have... My mother had 15 children. Uh -huh. 15 children. That's a lot of children. <laughs> That's a lot of children. <laughs> okay, okay. No, a lot of children. <laughs> a lot of okay, children. Okay. So what happened was uh, people heard us and they start, oh, can I get you all to come for our church, so and so and so, and book a, and start booking us. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have no name. It was mm -hmm. just Charles Taylor, Ella Mitchell, and Kitty Parm. Mm -hmm. My mother said, listen, Kitty, you are a star in your choir mm -hmm. in, in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Charles Taylor, you are a star all by yourself. Mm -hmm. 
And my daughter is a star because she's been singing all of her okay. life. Okay. Because my mother sang before mm -hmm. me. Okay. She says, so I'm going to name you all the All Stars. All Stars. Okay. And that's where it came from, my mother. And that's a very befitting name, too. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are some stars. You remember that? <laughs> Who is that singer? <laughs> you gonna make me slap you. <laughs> we salute you and we honor you. Thank you for your contributions. Because <laughs> some stars. Y'all have had some Well, superior. that's the way my mother felt about <laughs> so we didn't care. We just loved to sing. Uh -huh. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about this or that. It was just that we loved to sing. And Saturday night mm -hmm. was Young People's Night in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Different churches. Didn't uh -huh. matter whose church it was. Mm -hmm. we, let's go to so-and-so's church this Saturday. Let's go to that church this Saturday. And that's the way it was. Wow. And that's how we became Charles Taylor, Professor Charles Taylor. And the gospel all saw it. And, and, and what's amazing is that Professor Charles Taylor was one of the first ones to uh, actually garner the pseudonym of uh, the king of gospel because he was actually uh, noted, credited as the king of gospel while he lived. A lot of people recognized him as the king oh, of gospel. Oh, he was the first, yes. Yeah, while he lived, you know. Absolutely. You know. But l let's, let's, let's stay here a bit. Uh, so prior to seventeen, with the gospel all stars, what were you, what what was Miss Ella, what was Young Ella doing? Like, what church did you come from? What were you doing musically? Oh, I um, I came from Refuge Temple. Okay. At the time, mm -hmm. uh, Bishop Lawson, who had, who is of course now passed, uh -huh. didn't pass, and um, that's where my mother was from, mm -hmm. and all. The Pope family, Refuge Temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, up until now, what happened is uh, the branch out from Refuge Temple mm -hmm. is the Glorious Church of God, and that's where I belong. The, the Glor Glorious Church of God, okay. The Glorious Church of God, and uh, that's in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. It's on, uh, it was the picture there on the wall. Uh -huh. Bishop. Oh, that's the pastor there. Bishop the Lindsay. Okay. He's passed. Okay. So his son has taken over, and David is now the pastor wow. of the church. Wow. But that's where uh, my children were baptized. Mm -hmm. My three children mm -hmm. at that time uh, were baptized there, and I've been in the Church of Jesus ever since. Wow. All my life. Well, let me take a moment here. Let me just embrace this moment. I'm literally sitting with you. Like, I have really, really, you've been on my radar. <laughs> let me tell you that. <laughs> so it's just amazing how, God to bless. watch how God allows things to unfold in your life if you're walking in your purpose. Praise you know God. what I mean? So I'm, I don't take this moment lightly. So Praise I just want to put that footnote. I just, I uh, really appreciate this moment. Praise right. God. Really? Okay. I lived in Brooklyn. Uh, I used to own houses. I used to love to do that. Mm -hmm. Own houses, give people places to stay. But then once I started touring mm -hmm. and traveling with David Frost, from David Frost to Harry Belafonte, you see us over there on okay. stage, and uh, start. Uh, Barbara Eden, I Dream of Jeannie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I did the Best Little Whole House in Texas with her. Mm. Yeah, I started doing plays mm -hmm. and singing mm -hmm. in plays. Mm -hmm. And once I started that, I had to join the union. Okay. 
and in joining the union, I belong to all five unions, mm -hmm. AGMA, uh, Equity League, mm -hmm. all of them, yes. all five of the unions, because I started adding into my group mm -hmm. after I formed me a, a group of my uh, own. What happened was once Jane, once Charles Taylor left the group mm -hmm. and uh, we were the Gospel All-Stars by ourselves, okay. then we started traveling around until we ran into Bradford and James Cleveland. Wow. We had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And once we made the decision whether we was going with Bradford or going with James, the group picked James. Mm -hmm. So we went on with James. Wow. But I did the uh, rehearsing and singing with Bradford. I was supposed to record the song with him. Uh, I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. But after uh, I, we picked James, mm -hmm. Bradford did the, so, the leading of that song himself. Yeah. They built these two buildings, mm -hmm. one on 9th Avenue and one on 10th Avenue here in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. That's what this is called. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was, when I got one of the jobs on Broadway, because mm -hmm. I did the Amen Corn, I did so many, my, my, my career is mostly church and theater. And theater, okay. Because movies was the last thing mm -hmm. that I did. Mm -hmm. So it was, they, uh, I moved from Brooklyn mm -hmm into this building mm -hmm. because our union built this building oh, for people who are in the show business. Okay. You can't live in this building mm -hmm. if you're not in the business. You have to either be doing sound, lights, acting, something to do with theater mm -hmm. to live in, this in mm -hmm. these two buildings. Because they built these buildings because when we're working on Broadway, we can just walk to work. Wow. Okay. See, that's what Manhattan, that's wow. what this building, and it's called the Manhattan Plaza. Wow. Wow. That's what this building is called. Well, on that note, what I wanted <laughs> to do was give a soft introduction uh, to this presentation for this particular episode. Uh, so we're going to take a short uh, musical intermission. We're going to play a number by the professor himself. Uh, Mr. Charles Taylor and the All Stars singing oh, yeah. a newborn soul. So. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out now. Look out. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Newborn soul. Newborn soul. All right, you guys, welcome back to Gospel Diaries. I am literally having a blast, and I truly hope you enjoy that beautiful number by the fabulous All-Star. <laughs> oh, my God. So now it's time to delve a bit more into your Gospel Diary. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's go into your recordings with uh, Professor Charles Taylor. And one of the songs that I particularly I'm so fond of is uh, What Could I Do? My God. Let's talk a little bit about that song. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what could I do? What could I do? Can you, can you give me a little a line of it, please? Yeah, I wrote it. Give me a line. Can you sing a little bit? If you should leave uh -huh. me. <laughs> 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 okay, tell us about the song. <laughs> um, at that time, back then, we would do things like if somebody heard a song that they liked, they would keep the tune and whatnot, and uh, uh, Gladys Knight would do it, uh, different people would uh -huh. do it. Ray Charles, he took lots of songs <laughs> that were gospel songs and went on and you know, we re re recorded them and etc. 
So when I heard that song, What Could I Do Without You to See Me Through, I fell in love with it. And when we got ready to record, I changed the words. What could I do oh, without you to see me through? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. But you know what? The, the words, the message. Literally, what what could I do? Without God Come to on, see somebody. it. Hallelujah. Don't, <laughs> you start, don't start me. Don't start Listen, me. Listen, I'm Hallelujah. spiritual, okay? <laughs> Don't start me. <laughs> uh, the opportunity to record with Charles Taylor, like how did how did that come about? Because he actually was recording on uh, tux, uh, Tuxedo, uh, tuxedo records, records at that particular time. So, do you know anything about that? Uh, the introduction to his recording career. No, I don't know how he got in touch with it. Mm -hmm. All I know is uh, when we was getting ready to um, when we got ready to record. Mm -hmm. That's the company mm -hmm. that was doing gospel okay. at that time. That right one in Savoy. In, mm -hmm. Right here in, in this area. In, in, in New York. New York okay. In New York. Uh, Tuxedo, uh, Savoy. Mm -hmm. um, those were the companies that was specializing in gospel. Mm -hmm. So that's the company that so we So take us with. into the studio. Like, um, was the Tuxedo had their own studio? Yes. There, oh, okay, so take us into the recording process back in the early 50s. Well, we, you, you just get there uh, in the studio, and they had people, of course, who was take, doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, Engineers. Engineering yeah. okay. it and whatnot. Uh -huh. And uh, that's what we would do. But but uh, like uh, when we got with James Cleveland, uh, even with Charles Taylor, what would happen sometimes is if you're doing an album, they would need like one more song. Mm -hmm. We could go in the next room, write the song, rehearse it, and then go back in there and record it <laughs> to make up what we needed on the album. Um, we. I have experienced, mm -hmm. I have experienced that uh, black and white thing, mm -hmm. and it didn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. um, there were times when we went places, and uh, we had to do backdoor things, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I knew that we would go through the kitchen and come through uh, to come out into places, to audience, to sing. Let me get this correct. You, <laughs> oh, yeah. you said you went through the kitchen to, to, to go get, out to perform? What? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Called back door. It was called a back door. Mm -hmm. I, I'm lost for words. Yes, yes, we have. So, so you just learned. How this is it's when, a part of I, life, but huh? this was not with Charles Taylor. With Charles Taylor, we were mostly uh, here in between Brooklyn, New York, and White Plains, mm -hmm. different places in the, around in the area mm -hmm. to sing. But this was later when I started in. How do I say? Um, I don't want well, a broader, okay, a broader okay. uh, traveling and singing. And uh, after we left Charles Hill and whatnot, and we went into different places mm -hmm. where we had to come through. We went through the kitchen and came out to on stage. Mm -hmm. They brought us through and we performed. And this sister Ella, did you used to shout? Did you dance in church? Oh, the whole I time. Now. <laughs> the whole time that I traveled with Bella Fonte, uh -huh. I would shout off stage. Would you? My opening number with Harry was by the Gospel Clefs. Uh huh. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, by oh, the Gospel Clefs. Uh, when Israel was in Egypt land, uh -huh. let my people go. Stop it. And that's what I opened the show with let my people uh -huh. go. Uh huh. And when I would close the show and finish and getting ready to leave, I said, I shout <coughs> off the stage, honey. 
shot off the stage. And Harry oh, changed God. my name uh. and started calling me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you our spiritual leader, <laughs> Miss Ella Mitchell. And he named me his spiritual leader. I wow. have the albums there. Wow. And bow and go right into Hallelujah. Wow. My holy dance and shout off okay. stage again. Fondest memories of the late great Charles Taylor. Did all our rehearsing in his house. Really? At his piano. He lived with his aunt in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And it ended up, I met Sissy, a girl named Sissy, who used to go with my brother. Mm -hmm. Once she start, we found out how she could sing, Charles put her in the Gospel All-Stars and married her. Sissy, not, not, Sissy. Not, not, not the one I'm thinking of, right? Not Houston. No, not okay, Sissy okay, Houston. Okay, okay. This was another girl named okay. Sissy. Okay. She wound up being uh, Taylor. Okay. She married Charles. Right. Oh, that was his wife. Okay. okay. He married okay. Charles. Wow. And uh, she sang in the group. And we would rehearse at their house. He still lived with his aunt in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And all the memories were beautiful. Wow. Except that w we, when, Char when Kitty left the group and went with the ward singers, mm -hmm. I got another one of my sister's friends, uh, Dorothy Crookshank, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she joined the group. And uh, by me knowing R R Reverend um, O'Neill and the members of his Christian church. Christian Tabernacle. Uh, yeah. Okay. By me knowing them, uh, I used to use his limousine service. His name was Robert Hines. Really? Okay. And Robert Hines used to drive us around. He introduced me to Rose Hines. Okay. The singer. Yes. Rose Hines. Marie so, Hines. Rose Marie Hines, right? Oh no. Yeah, I don't know if Marie was in her name or not. We <laughs> never called her nothing but Rose. Rose Hines. <laughs> okay. Anyway, she sang in the choir uh -huh. at Reverend O'Neill's church. Mm -hmm. And she wind up with Robert Hines. And that's how her name became Hines. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then he introduced me to her. And she took the place of the soprano when Kitty Palm left the group and went to the award singers. Mm -hmm. We got Rose Hines. Mm -hmm. So all the recordings that you hear of the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. and all them high notes, that's Rose Hines. And we became, uh, the, uh, the group became Rose Hines, Dorothy Crookshank, and Ella Mitchell. So the late, great king of gospel music, James Cleveland. Tell James us, Cleveland. how did you meet James Cleveland and how did you all start recording? Um, I met James Cleveland when he came to New York mm -hmm. to teach the choir and play for Dr. Child's church before he died. Mm. The name of the church Third was Temple? Child, yes, oh. uh, up on Amsterdam Avenue here in Manhattan. And he had heard of Professor Charles Taylor and the Gospel All Star. Mm -hmm. So when we went up to church one Sunday, or oh, I don't know what day it was, it might have been a Saturday night, because mm -hmm. Saturday night was always good and big in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, sometime we would come in Manhattan, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, James got in touch with me, or I got in touch with him. I don't remember now. It's been mm -hmm. so many years ago. But we got in touch with each other, and he was telling me that we were the greatest harmonizing group, mm -hmm. gospel group, he had ever heard, the wow. harmony. But that was because my mother mm -hmm. specialized in harmony. Mm. 
We used to sit and harmonize with no piano. My brother would start, people that we me, people that to me, people that to me, out on the street. I was the Samsung, I was the Samsung, I was the Samsung. And, and I would harmonize with it. Mm -hmm. People out to me, people out to me. We would do that. And we specialized in harmony mm -hmm. because the original group was the Mitchell Jubilee. Mm -hmm. That's the picture over okay, there on okay. my piano. And um, before I was old enough to, to be in the, the uh, adult group, you see a, the smaller group, the Mitchell Airs. We were the wow. Mitchell Airs. So over there, over. so your mother was true to it. Oh, my mother, my mother, my mother. <laughs> Did she yes. ever record? No. Okay. Okay. No, no. Mm -mm. Okay. So you were talking about meeting James. So that's how I met James. Mm -hmm. He had heard about the gospel all stars, and when uh, at the time when he had heard about us, we had already left Charles Taylor, mm -hmm. and we were only just the gospel all stars. Okay. And so he said, how would y'all like to have a, a single with y'all mm -hmm. again? So we looked at each other. Well, we have already been asked to sing, to go with Alex Bradford. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you've been asked already. So I said, well, well, we'll make up our mind and we'll let you know. And we made up our mind. Rose Hines and Dorothy, we made up the minds that we was going to go with James Cleveland. Wow. Well, that looked like me. I think that might be you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sister. How in the world he's doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sister. 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 Tony, did you see what he just said? So this, this is, we're going to play this after a while. Oh, my Apollo Records, yes. <laughs> All right, Gospel Diaries, we are back. We are having a blast. We just played some music, and Mama Mitchell, she was so surprised to see herself on YouTube. <laughs> That's because your music is classic, you know. Thank you so much for the music, your contribution. Thank you so much for letting me. Oh my God! We I'll marry you. you in the morning. <laughs> listen, I came all the way out here to New York to tell you I love you. To, look, I, listen, I ain't getting no car. I, I mean, I ain't come across the bridge nowhere. I came from all the way from the other coast to come here to embrace you, just to let you know how sincere. Oh, you gonna stop me crying? How stop, sincere stop, I am. Stop. When it comes to our contributors to gospel music, mm. because uh, you, your voice, your legacy, it has helped, and it will continue to help a lot of people along. Nothing this but rush. God. Yeah. Nothing but God. And God gave you that gift. Nothing but God. And you didn't allow. You didn't allow it to I lie tell dormant. you quickly something mm -hmm. that happened. I've been singing for Alvin Ailey mm -hmm. for long before he even passed, mm -hmm. and one night at Alvin Ailey. Every year when we do Revelation, mm -hmm. rock my soul, and all those songs, they have uh, a special guest. Mm -hmm. They've had Michelle Obama. They've had different ones and what. And so this night they had Monique. Mm -hmm. And when I finished singing, they told me, he says, Monique would like to speak to you. And I said, okay. So I was getting ready to get in the limousine and come home. So I told him to hold on. I went back to see what Monique wanted. Mm -hmm. And she was crying. Wow. She said, I've never heard a voice mm. that made pimples and things jump out on my arm mm. before you. Mm. And she took my hand mm -hmm. <laughs> and put money in my wow. hand. Wow, okay. And I, I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, Alvin Ellen didn't pay me okay. gracefully. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, no. she said, no, this is something that in here mm -hmm. I am led to do. Mm -hmm. 
because of the way you made me mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I got home mm. and I opened my hand and counted the hundred dollar bills that she had squares in my hand, you would not believe it. Jesus. I took them all and put them in my Bible in my room. Mm -hmm. And they stayed in my Bible for a long time. Johnny McCarkland for mm -hmm. my birthday. Mm -hmm. I paid him his sent him his advance pay. And at the program, at my birthday, every year I celebrate my birthday in church, thanking God for Come another on, year. Uh -huh, uh -huh. See what I'm saying? <laughs> and when I paid him his balance, he signed the paper that I paid him mm -hmm. and turned around and gave me back the envelope and said, Happy Birthday, Elemental. Really? Tony's Tony been singing with me for over 30, almost 35 years now. And he's been at every birthday. Uh, listen, don't start me. Wow. 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 We got to cover some more stuff. Well, uh, um, Tony. Uh-huh. Halibut. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. He can do it. Oh, yeah. So, in other words, you all, I'm going to have a link below. I have a magazine. Well, this is a very old copy, but it's called The Gospel Music Is That. We are, we are, are you going to take it? No, this is yours. Oh, oh thank you. Because <laughs> I was going to ask you, could I buy it or whatever? That's yours. Oh, <laughs> so if you want to, the link is in, and just get a, a a copy. But let's go. Let's steer our attention uh, to the New York area. Let's talk about Kristen Tabernacle, okay? okay. Pope O'Neill. Give us an experience. Give us that experience. I just knew Reverend O'Neill mm -hmm. because of uh, Robert Hines mm -hmm. and Rose Hines mm -hmm. that sang with me, mm -hmm. and uh, I used to go to Reverend O'Neill's church. Mm -hmm. I used to go to Reverend O'Neill's church, mm -hmm. and he that choir was bad. Really? That yeah, well, Rose Hines was in that choir, uh -huh. and I took her out that choir and put her in the gospel <laughs> <life> song. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, um, uh, Bishop, the late Archbishop Carl Bing told me that uh, the Sweet Inspirations uh, will commute there. Uh, Estelle Brown, right? Estelle? Yes, yeah. Estelle, get out of here. <laughs> you know about Estelle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. that's way back. Oh, so, so, Jesus. So, um, so they had a broadcast too. They used to come on the radio. Yep. Yes, they did. So, what was the thing? That song? was the baddest choir. Really? Oh my God. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. So New York they had it bad. going. New York had it going on. They had it going on. Mm -hmm. I'll be eighty-eight years old. Hey, say it one more time. Eighty-eight. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think they heard you in the back. <laughs> okay. Eighty-eight <laughs> this year. <laughs> okay. You understand? Know uh huh. Uh huh. And some of the memory uh -huh. is is eighty eight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Apollo oh. Theater. Okay. Well, give us some memories that you have about the Apollo Theater. We were the first gospel group mm -hmm. that was participated in the first gospel uh, show mm -hmm. at the Apollo Theater. And you're talking about the All Stars. Yes, I'm okay. talking about Charles Taylor. Oh, okay. The, back with Charles Taylor. Wow. We were the... For, uh, for Lev, you are iconic for your role uh, in the movie Big Mama House. So how did that get started? <laughs> how did that opportunity unfold? Oh, wow. There, but there's a movie that I did before Big Mama's House mm -hmm. where I really sang. Mm -hmm. I sang, uh, take me to the water for the baptism. Mm -hmm. And I had to sing a demon out of a girl's belly mm -hmm. that was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the Color of Love. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the movie. Okay. The Color of Love. Okay. And uh, that was the first movie mm -hmm. where I did a lot of singing. Mm. In Big Mama's house, I don't think I think I only sang one song. Take me to the water. <laughs> no, not Wasn't take it? me to the water. Oh, happy day! Oh, yes, happy girl. day! Mm -hmm. I think I did. Oh, happy yeah, day! Yeah, because <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. So you try to act like you didn't see him in there, <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. You Jay, did a wonderful job. Uh, 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 um, what's uh, I'm trying. 
say his name. Who's Cedric the Entertainer? No, I'm trying Morris? to say, uh, oh, Frederick the Entertainer was funny. He mm. was the pastor of the church. <laughs> he, and, uh, but, um, Martin, mm -hmm. he was the most fantastic person that I had ever worked with when it comes to respect. Because he's known for his dirty mouth. Mm -hmm. And he would never say one curse word in front of me. Wow. So all the cussing and stuff that he would do, they would film before I get on the set. Mm. Because after he was jogging to lose enough weight mm -hmm. to wear my fat suit mm -hmm. so he'd be my size, mm -hmm. he collapsed and went into the hospital, mm. and he was in a coma. We had to stop filming Big Mama's house because he was in a coma. Wow. What we did was, my mother, we got to church, and we prayed. Mm -hmm. And they called me one day, and they said, Ella? Tell your family, your mother, whoever, their mm -hmm. church, to keep on praying because Martin moved his finger today. Mm. He couldn't talk to the doctor, but he moved his finger. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, praise God. Wow. Then they called me another day. I think it was the second day. And said, Ella, he still can't talk. But he was able to write the doctor a whole note today. Okay. <laughs> He's moving his hand. Mm. And then when they called me the day that they said, Ella, your ticket is paid for. Get on the plane. He's up, walking around. Hallelujah. Hey. And he's doing all right. Okay. Come on back to work. Come on back to work. <laughs> and that's when I met him. Because the whole time, we were filming. Mm -hmm. They had never introduced me to Martin. Oh, really? No. Oh, wow. But when I got there that day and I checked in my trailer, mm -hmm. I had my own trailer. All right. <laughs> they said, come on. They came and got me. The guy that was driving me around. Mm -hmm. And we going over to Martin's trailer. He wants to meet you. Wow. So I went on over to his trailer. And he looked at me. Like you looking at me now, mm -hmm. and I looked at him, and then we grabbed each other oh, wow. and hugged each other. Wow. Oh. And he said, uh -huh. I, I heard all about how you brought me to life. Wow. And everything. We, oh, this is beautiful. I don't, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. Wow. And from that day on, I never heard a curse word come out of Martin's mouth. Never. And he would say, get up, open that door for Ella. Oh, she's getting ready to go. Uh-uh, help her down. To go. Open that door so she can go down the stairs. Uh, everything. He took care of me. He took care of me. I met his mother mm. and his daughter. She was about this high wow. when I met her. She's in college now and everything. I, I keep in touch with mm. Rhonda, mm -hmm. the sister. But um, when his mother passed, it, it took me back because wow. his mother was such a nice person. And I told him, I said, whenever you come to New York, because at that time I had a cook mm -hmm. and a, an assistant that traveled all over the world with me, mm -hmm. Muriel. Mm -hmm. That's her picture right there, okay. straight over, mm -hmm. next to the drifters. That's okay. her picture. And uh, she cooked, she's from Barbados. Mm -hmm. She cooked and traveled with me, took care of my children when I'm on the road, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. I paid her well. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> and on that note, listen, I've had a blast. I, I pray to God one day that our, our company will pick up this series, because right now I'm doing this all out, of, it's in my heart. Because I wish God I could spend you. more time. Man, you know, make me cry. Because, I, I mean, I just love this word. God. As I say always, um, love on someone and you will change your life. 
Oh, and uh, our next episode is going to be with Pastor Vincent Bohanna uh, right here in New York. And we have an episode with Terrence Kennedy and Anthony uh, Morgan and who else? Dr. Kevin Bond and uh, the professor himself, James Hall. So until then, we'll see you later. Hopefully you might even see Miss Ella over there on the piano before it's all said and done. We'll see you later. Bye.